Uh, so, so this is a game idea that's probably been in my ideas folder for like a, a decade now or something. I originally started working on it after like doing a poll of various game ideas I have. I polled on Twitter and to owners of Whip the Vote and uh, on 4 chans V anonymously um, to get an idea of what would be popular. And Detective Game was was a top pick, if not the top pick, everywhere. So I started working on it last year, but it got got put on hold while I was porting Social Interaction Trainer to Unity, and then I ended up working on For Which It Stands instead of going back to it. Um, I'd gotten a lot done already in like the month I worked on it. Um, so coming back to it, I've just mostly been cleaning up the code right now. I left, I left a mess. So what's so special about this detective game that I need to make a prototype instead of just making it? How is it any different than anything else? Well, uh, it's a new concept, I think. I've, I don't think I've ever seen any game do this before. But so far, everything has been fairly smooth development. So here, l l let me just give you a tour. We got the current time up here, which ticks forward as you do things. Got a big section in the middle, the, the evidence locker, I call it, where um, each of these cards are a piece of evidence. Um, one of the big differences between this game and any other detective game uh, I've seen is that uh, it's just what is considered evidence. Most games, the concept of evidence is just physical evidence, sometimes statements, um, and the statements that you get are normally limited to the traditional branching dialogue. Like, that's how you would get it in most games. Um, in this game, everything is evidence, and the evidence is all, it's all atomized, so you can pick out aspects easily. So every person and every place that comes up in the investigation is a piece of evidence. Every, every physical evidence, you know, every physical link to the crime, every statement, uh, and so on. Each of them has their own card in this locker. And uh, like any real investigation would, all of this evidence has its own like metadata, meta information about, you know, when it was discovered and where and who found it. Below the evidence locker, we have two drop down boxes here. One is for the locations you can go to, which uh, expands as your evidence links you to new places. And the other we have is for people at that location who you can interact with. And similarly to locations, it will expand as you um, have more people linked to. And uh, over here, there's just a, a time limit for how long you can interact with whatever person you're interacting with right now, um, just so that you you can't just try everything until you win. And then uh, these three buttons down here are the interaction methods. So you've got um, alibi, which gives you a date input, so you can ask the person for their alibi at a sp specific time and receive the uh, statement. You'll get a statement back giving you their alibi for that time. Um, the About button allows you to select any piece of evidence for the, the person to produce a statement about. And um, if the evidence you give them is one of their own statements, something they've said before, then uh, you can include a second piece of evidence on top of their statement. That way you can ask them about how their statement conflicts with another piece of evidence. And then you can receive a new statement. And then completing the three A's of interaction, we have arresting, arrest. And when you arrest a person, it transports them to the police station location and then extends your time limit with them. And it also gives you evidence of their fingerprints and their blood type. Um, like you've taken them through processing. Uh, similarly, there is a special character called the lab technician at the police station. Um, and if you present evidence to him through the about, which has um, blood on it, uh, he'll give you the, the type of blood, the blood type of the blood on that piece of evidence. And you can also present him with two pieces of fingerprint evidence, and he will check if they, they match each other. 
So, like, as you can see through these different systems, we essentially have infinite evidence. Of course, it's infinite shit evidence of repeatedly asking about unimportant shit that doesn't matter. So, um, but that that's, um, that's what I think has been missing from detective games. The player being able to actually lead the investigation without the story imposing on you, telling you what to focus on. There's there's nothing like that. If you focus on something that's wrong, that's just, you know, that's on you. If this game survives beyond the, the prototype stage, I definitely want, you know, art and cutscenes and dialogue. But as a raw game, it really shouldn't need any of those bells and whistles. Without dialogue or cutscenes, the evidence itself and your actions should be able to convey the entire story. Um... The next system I need to complete is what I call the like the desires system for the non-player characters. It's basically each character's ability to do certain actions um, in the present so that the case isn't completely static. It isn't completely, you know, grave digging. The idea of this system is pretty much the same as how I've designed NPCs to work in Of Power Lines and Lolly Sim. So I pretty much know how to do it. The one difference is that the characters in Detective Game will often want to hide what they're doing from you, since the action will often be something to prevent them being caught by your investigation or, or changing it. I also need to consider how I'm going to implement the end game system for the prototype. Like for the full game, I imagine something like an evidence board where you put up all the important evidence like in the TV shows and you can decide to finish when you're satisfied with the connections and then you'll be scored on how accurate you were to the the actual solution. For the prototype, it can probably just be selecting every piece of evidence in the locker that connects the crime to your suspects. But yeah, so once those systems are put in place, I will begin actually designing a case to be played. And when it's done, I'll release it and see what people think of it before deciding whether or not to take this into full development with, you know, art and cutscenes and dialogue and voice actors and whatever.